Okay, Ross Hunter, tell me some of the genesis of uh, breaking up the act. Well, it was presented to us by Terry Smith, who wrote the play about a year ago. And my partner, who is producing, Jock Mapes, and myself, uh, worked with Terry for about a year until we really felt the play was right. Now, why are you starting in New Orleans and uh, taking that, that route? Because I feel very strongly that we have to try our play out in a small theater, get the audience's reaction, and not spend a million dollars before we get to New York. How much does it cost to go this route? I would say that in each one of the dinner theaters, about $25,000. Which is considerably less than, say, a doll's life going to New York and, and chunking down, I think, four million, isn't it? Four million, yes. But usually on the road, it's between 750000 and a million dollars before you can get to New York. And we want to make sure that our play is right before we do go to New York. If it isn't right, we will have had a wonderful time, and uh, we will not take it into New York. Now, you're one of our prime motion picture producers, and you've also done considerable television production. Why the stage? You made your, I think, your first return to the stage, uh, we will say, two years ago, wasn't it? Yes, I started uh, on the stage. Mm -hmm. uh, I started directing and producing uh, plays in the 10th Theater in the Valley here. Uh, I was under contract to Columbia as an actor, mm -hmm. and during the time I had my hiatus, which was three months every year, we would produce plays uh, in the Valley, and uh, even produce plays in a house and called it the Parlor Players. We sent quite a few plays to New York. One was uh, The Play's The Thing with Louis Calhoun. Mm -hmm. uh, we sent uh, a play with, um, oh gosh, I'm the lady who, that, Margaret Hamilton. Mm -hmm. We did a play with her, and we did Dream Girl, which we sent on the road with Virginia Gray. And unfortunately, or fortunately, all of us got movie contracts from that. And uh, every time I had an opportunity to go back to the theater, I do. But about two years ago, I broke my um, optic nerve in the back of my head and hit the base of my spine and was unable to work again in motion pictures for a while. But the doctors eventually said that I could go back to the theater. And uh, my first venture was going to the Beverly Dinner Theater in New Orleans, where we open October 29th. And I did a play with Vera Miles called um, The Gingerbread Lady. And then last year, I did a play with Dina Merrill called The Sound of Murder. Now the doctors say that in about six or seven months, I'll be ready to go back to producing motion pictures. But thank goodness I have an opportunity to do this wonderful play with three of the most talented ladies 
I've ever worked with, and I really mean that, a wonderful choreographer, Jack Payne, and a fine producer, Jack Mapes, and our ladies are, of course, Evelyn Keyes, Betty Garrett, and Jan Sterling, and who could ask for anything more? What if they put you back in the hospital, though, well, in the meantime? if they do, they'll come with me. That's what's <laughs> exciting. <laughs> now, in your Columbia days, did you ever work with uh, Evelyn Keyes at Columbia? She's a... No, but did I love her. I used to sneak in on the set and watch her work, and she was such a special lady. She had a magnetism and an image of great beauty and great charm and wonderful sophistication and, most of all, sensational talent. Had you ever worked with any of the other two ladies? No, of course. I've known Betty for years. I worked with Betty's husband, Larry Parks, uh, who was a superb actor. And, of course, Jan Sterling is like part of my family. I've known her forever. So it really is a family affair. And we're all in this together. No one man produces or directs or choreographs a picture. We're all doing it. I say a picture. That's the way I yeah, think. Yeah, picture person. Now right. tell me something about the story on Breaking Up the Act. Well, the story is very exciting. It's a story of uh, World War II. There were three teenagers who were sort of a poor man's Andrew sisters, and they entertained the troops overseas. And one of the soldiers was a man named Jimmy Carter. Thirty years later, he's in the White House, he remembers them and invites them back to entertain at the White House. He puts them up at the Watergate Hotel. Now, they haven't seen each other for 30 years. They really can't sing as well as they used to, uh -huh. so they lip sync to their old records. And uh, during the play, we learn about their lives. So although it is uh, high comedy, there's also great drama, much pathos, and wonderful music. Ross, what do you think about the state of the theater today? Well, I think we have to uh, be m a little more careful about our screen, our uh, screen plays. There I go again. Picture person. Uh, high yeah. plays. I think uh, the words are the most important thing, and we just can't do any play. We have to do a play. I think that's going to entertain or move uh, an audience emotionally. They're ready to go back to the theater. They need it. They want it. Uh, they can see any picture they want to see for nothing on television, and they're only going to go to the movies, unfortunately, for that special movie. Therefore, when they go out of their houses, they're very anxious to go to the theater. Now, if we can give them something that's different and exciting and inventive, they're going to keep coming back, and that's what we have to do. We have to get that audience back into the theaters. Do you think people can afford to go to the theater these days? Well, I really don't think they can afford to go to the big theaters anymore. That's why I'm so excited about the uh, uh, dinner theaters, where for between 20 and $25 a person, they can get free parking, a wonderful dinner, couple of cocktails, and we hope a magnificent play. Uh, something just parked on your head, but it's a fly, yes. That usually happens to me. <laughs> Attracting flies. <laughs> yes. Now, is not uh, it true that you are planning to build a dinner theater in the Los Angeles area? Yes, we are, uh, we are already into the stages. Of, we have our miniature. We are going to break ground, we hope, right after the first of the year. We are negotiating with two places in Newport. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a 600-seat theater, and we hope to bring some big stars like Rock Hudson, and Joan Rivers, and Carol Burnett, and Evelyn Keyes, and Betty Garrett, Jan Sterling, and whoever we can get, because we think that people are dying for theater. We feel that people want that live entertainment, and we also know that they can't afford it unless it's at a medium price, and a dinner theater can give you that. Now, uh, when is your target date for that to possibly open? We hope it will open in September of 83. That's what we're aiming for. We hope to break ground sometime in March. And it looks very exciting. I wish you could see the miniature. It's really wonderful. And if our play is a success, I'm going to ask the girls and Jack Payne if they would come and open our theater with Breaking Up the Act. Now tell me briefly, Breaking Up the Act opens in New Orleans when? It opens October 29th at the Beverly Dinner Playhouse. And we're going to run for six weeks. Uh, word is out already, and we fear, we have heard that the first three weeks are already sold out. So they've asked us to add three or four more weeks, and we're going to play six weeks. Then we take a uh, hiatus for the holidays, mm -hmm. and then we open in San Antonio, Texas at the Fiesta Dinner Playhouse. I believe it's uh, January 18th. Mm -hmm. And then from there on, who knows? May I say I wish you all the luck in the world with oh, it. Oh, thank you, Bob. You've always been so kind. Okay. <laughs> Okay, first off, are you all having a good time? Yes, yes we are. Yes, but Had you ever worked together before, any of you? No. No? No. We knew each other. I've known these two ladies for a long time. 
and I've admired Evelyn Keyes for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I adore you. But I would... <laughs> now, Jan Sterling, this is quite of a stretch for you. We know you as a dramatic actress. Uh... It's a great stretch. You <laughs> see, when you see me dancing, I've never done anything in my life like this. I've always wanted to. I mean, this is the I can die after this because now I've done what I want to do. Are you having as much fun as it looks like? More. Yes, I, 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 mean, I really adore it. I'm gonna, it's, it's the singing out that I like is really better than anything. The dancing is, I feel I'm kind of holding everybody back. Oh, but, you are. Yeah, no, but I mean, the singing out is, is really fun. Well, one of the things is you're also supposed to be a group that hasn't been together. Or, yeah, uh, I'm supposed to be the worst. So that's, that makes it easier. You always were the worst. Right? <laughs> I had other strings to my bow, as they say. And Evelyn Keyes, you're best known now, I would suppose, as a writer. You're uh, such an excellent writer and uh, have just finished another book. What tempted you to go back into the theater and do eight a week? Listen, when Ross Hunter calls you and sends a wonderful uh, script over, I'd be fooled to say no, wouldn't I? I guess. I, he's a wonderful producer. Everybody seems so in awe of Ross that have worked with him. He's, everyone says well, he's the definitive producer. I never had before, so I wanted to have the experience. So far, it's terrific. Of course, we've only been rehearsing three days. <laughs> and Betty Garrett, you're so active in the, um, the Los Angeles theater movement and has always been in the theater and a part of the theater. I guess you, more than anybody, I want to ask, what, what is right and what's wrong about the theater in general today? Oh, dear, I don't know. I, I think economics is the worst part of it. People cannot afford to go to the theater as much as they should, and, and it costs so much to put on a show. And uh, I would love to see it be the way it is, or was at, le at any rate in England, where everybody went to the theater. It was like a, a habit. And they don't do that here, and I think until it is within people's price range, I don't know how they can do it. When you work in the theater in a production like this, is there still a lure about Broadway, the, the possibility of Broadway at the tail end of it, or does that not matter so much anymore? Oh, always, I think. I, I would hope sometimes that, that we begin to see that there is wonderful theater all over the country. Certainly in Los Angeles, there's wonderful theater. But there's always that thing about the Big Apple. Is, uh, if you get a show to Broadway, then somehow it has more importance. I don't know why that is, but it is true. Well, I wish you well on this, and I thank you for the, taking time away from the rehearsal to come and talk with us today. We're delighted. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Good. Thank you.